Foster, would there be five minutes for a couple of questions? Well, uh, yeah, five minutes, shoot. Okay. You know, I was struck by your preaching. You, you referred mainly to Old Testament, and it was almost as though you felt we were living in a time of biblical prophecy. Was that accurate? No, it's not accurate. If you had the, just a little knowledge of the Bible, you would know that what you just said is stupidity in spades. I don't know how to deal with a question like that. Just, you're just too dumb. Sorry. It may not seem like it, but there's a real art to asking questions. A documentary broadcaster, Louis Theroux, is a prime example to demonstrate this concept. In just under 20 years, Louis Theroux has produced over 50 documentaries for the BBC, covering a wide range of topics including neo-Nazism, the US prison system, the health and medical industry, and infamously the Westboro Baptist Church. I'm willing to talk with you, but you're, you're just being silly and specious. I'm not being silly. Of course you are. Of course you are. You want to ride back? There's something oddly unique about Theroux that just really keeps your attention, so today, let's explore that. His topics in their own right are deeply interesting and fascinating to watch, but it's how he converses with individuals and builds relationships that makes him a character worth discussing. Starting his television career on Michael Murr's TV Nation in the mid-90s, Louis has come to prominence for his distinct style of interviewing. Rather than construct formal interviews in a controlled environment, Louis opts for an unstructured format that allows him to engage individuals in a natural and non-confrontational way. The intention for this is to make the individual being interviewed feel comfortable and relaxed in what becomes a genuine conversation. Louis then generates his questions based around the responses of the individual, and thus encourages the individual to shed more light on the topic in question without feelings of pressure or stigma. It may not seem like anything special, but his ability to establish a rapport with his subjects makes his work feel less like qualitative research and more so an everyday guy that simply wants to have a chat with people about personal issues that affect them. His documentaries are never attempting to prove a point, but rather to observe and understand social themes through personal stories, with Theroux representing our ignorance to the issue under investigation. Social ignorance is so blatantly true that rather than walking into a scenario with extensive research, Louis plays on ignorance and naivety to make individuals feel more relaxed discussing powerful issues. He never understands the whole picture and neither do we, which makes for a more collective learning experience as a result. Now, what's important about his style is how it influences the hierarchy of his conversations. He isn't trying to judge or necessarily challenge everybody, but rather put subjects into a position of superiority to make them more willing to engage with him. And with the individuals he does interview, his gullible charm and compassionate attitude eases the dynamic of interviewer and interviewee as he acknowledges their vulnerability. Louis remains emotionally detached from his subjects to maintain a neutral perspective on issues at hand, which allow for conversations to develop in various ways as he exposes himself to scrutiny as well. For example, during his time in California to observe neo-Nazism, he's confronted by two skinheads who claim he's Jewish. But as Louis explains... Judgment, I'm not actually Jewish. I have no problem with being identified as Jewish. It's just not a factual statement. He goes on to explain how saying he's not Jewish to the skinhead would seem like pandering, whereas by not saying anything he brings up the conflict of there being a difference between races, exploring other issues. In this scenario, Theroux uses his neutral perspective to help expose further issues within the subject matter. Rather than answering the skinhead's question, Louis is able to witness how they react towards people they're unsure of. As the confrontation develops, the skinhead becomes extremely protective of his territory, and he's uncomfortable as evidenced by his body language. While Louis doesn't reassure him, it allows for information to unfold naturally without directly communicating ideas. Louis never begins by initiating the topic. He tends to ask a seemingly innocuous question that provokes the individual into engaging the topic at their own free will. For example, at the Westboro Baptist Church, the first question he asks leader Fred Phelps is... There's a pretty, pretty big family here. How many children do you have? It proves to be a simple, almost irrelevant question as rebuked by the converted filmmaker Steve, but the context is significantly more valuable when Louis explains that four of Fred's children have left the church. You already knew how many children he had. Um, yeah, but I wanted to know how many he uh, would say that he had, because I know that he had 13, but that four have fallen away. So by dodging the question or dismissing it, Fred effectively enlightens us as to how separated the church is from those that abandoned them, even those dearest to them. 
Louis admits that he knows the answer, but clarifies that by hearing it from Fred brings out a more honest reflection of the church's attitude. Another example of Louis' style of establishing conversation is when he's introduced to an incarcerated paedophile. Look at how he asks the first question. What, what, are, you, what are you in for? What are you, what are you doing here? It appears to be quite an obvious answer given the circumstances, but Louis wants to hear what the individual has to say about their situation because it makes Louis feel less intrusive and sets the boundaries as to what the individual is comfortable talking about. Louis Theroux is good at attaining information without deceiving or even pressuring the individual. While it might seem like manipulation, watch how Louis asks follow-up questions to this group in Philadelphia regarding crime. Louis is genuine about his ignorance, but uses it as a way to get the individual to open up. But the potential subject matter is rejected, even when Louis attempts to shake hands to create a human connection. From here, watch how Louis fishes for information, eventually returning to the original question to feed for an alternative response from the same individual. Why is there so much crime and gun violence here? Oh my god. I don't, I don't even know for real. I couldn't even tell you. Louis again plays ignorant and takes the man's unknowingness quite literally to ask, Would you tell me if you, if you did know? In which he replies, No. Why not? You're not supposed to do that. You're violating code number one, bait. No Never snitching. Snitch. Never, Never snitch. snitch. What's interesting is how Louis maneuvers the conversation to attain a very interesting point from the man who originally refused to establish a relationship or give details. Louis, now acknowledging the topic of snitching, modifies the question. If you had information about a homicide, someone getting killed, would you go to the police and help them? Why would I? To help. You think if somebody killed me, somebody gonna go to the police and say, oh, I know who killed... If I knew, I would. No, not that's you. Despite the man attempting to refuse the question, he slips more information regarding the potential for snitchers to be preyed upon by others. In this very scenario, we have an individual refusing to give answers, but inadvertently revealing information through questions constructed to ease that individual into a conversation. Even Louis' later conversation with the drug lord Reds shows how he moulds his questions to attain answers. In this conversation, Louis tries to get Reds to open up about his drug business despite his denial. The we've been writing with the police yes. a little bit, you know that. They've been telling you about us, right? They told me that you run things around here and that you control the flow of drugs around. No, no, that's, that's wrong, man, that's wrong. Interestingly, Louis' first expression is not a question, but rather he presents a statement he heard from the police. Louis remains neutral and doesn't claim that it's fact, but rather anticipates the dealer's reaction to the allegation. When Reds doesn't bite, Louis tactically turns to his jewellery and asks if it's real diamond, inferring to the potential for Reds to be a rich man, which would incidentally confirm Louis' suspicions as he highlights the cost of the jewellery. What's the story with your chain? Is that, are those, are those real diamonds? <laughs> yes. Oh, How much for something like that? A couple, couple of grand. A couple of grand? Yeah. If those are diamonds, that must be quite a bit more yes, than that. Yes, it is. How much? Probably 24. 24,000? Maybe a bit more? Maybe a, a gold is higher, man. How much then? Probably like 25. As a result of this innocuous and seemingly irrelevant question, Louis asks him his career to narrow down his observations, getting closer and closer to the truth. How do you make your living? What? Well, look, I, look, real estate, we, we sell cars and everything, you know. Look, this is my daughter right here. But even when Red still doesn't give a viable answer, just like all of Louis' documentaries, he doesn't judge his subjects, but rather leaves his observations open to the interpretation of the viewer. What's important about Theroux's documentaries is not what new information we uncover, but rather how we respond to the stories of real individuals. It's looking to create discussion, Theroux wants us to get a small glimpse of the lives of others without intense scrutiny. These are personal tales that are never toyed with, but rather explored under the control of that individual. And at the end of the day, it's not up to Louis nor us to impose our own feelings, but rather welcome the feelings of others. Even if they conflict and challenge our beliefs, it's that sense of compassion and understanding that Louis presents that helps ease us into worlds that we're so ignorantly unfamiliar with.
Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you can't tell by now, uh, I am massively influenced by uh, Louis Theroux. Sorry for being gone for two weeks, I have been busy, so uh, now that that's out of the way, I can sort of get back to working on these videos. Um, if you want to, uh, please do consider pledging to the channel, that is what's going to keep the lights on and is sort of going to help me uh, along the way, especially if you want to see more and more content from me uh, along the journey. Uh, until next time, stay safe and subscribe if you haven't, uh, make sure to comment below, I love hearing your thoughts, and you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so I'll, yeah, I'll see you next week.